Welcome to Hobby Clubhouse with the review of the Bandai 1144 High Grade Build Fighters Amazing Seacock, which was featured in Gundam Build Divers GM's Counter Attack. But really, it was just barely there. This is another one of those designs that Bandai came up with as a model kit and then they just somehow worked it into an animated short just to justify it. I know that sounds real cynical and I really don't like that low effort way of selling us designs, but you know, these designs like the amazing Zegok here do look interesting on their own merits and it made me want to order this and guess what? This kit actually packs a few surprises. This review will be a little bit different from usual because the amazing Zegok actually builds upon the base of the HGUZ Zegok, so I won't be repeating anything I've covered in the review over there, so make sure to check it out if you haven't already. We'll be looking at all the new parts and upgrades it brings to the old Zegok kit, and an extra bit of use for the parts right here. So getting right down to business, this kit was a P-Bandai exclusive and it was sent out in Japan in October 2017. It was priced at 1,620 yen, and it comes in a box measuring 30 by 19 by 7.5 centimeters. It has not been re-released on P-Bandai ever since as of this video, so getting this kit from a reseller now may cost a little bit more unfortunately. My box here is water damaged, so it's all out of shape, and you're gonna see my water damage kits from time to time since my storage got its door torn off in a storm some years ago and everything inside got wet, but that's a horror story for another day. Anyway, this kit comes in a standard P Bandai box with a monochrome print and no custom box art. The sides have no studio shots, so that's it. Inside the box, we get the original Zegok on its four runners, and then we get an additional two new multicolor runners that hold all of the amazing Zegok's new parts. The new runners are clones of each other, so they each look like this one right here. We also get a small sheet of stickers from the original Zegok, which has a mono eye sticker and then one more for the cockpit door. What's nice is the full color instructions that we get right here, which is fortunately something quite common among the build fighters and build divers P Bandai kits. So you get additional info on the MS right here and you can pause it if you want to read this in more detail. The back has a lot of stuff here because the new arms are supposed to feature characteristics of several other Xeon Marine mobile suits. So again, you can pause this if you need to see any of the details on here. And the bottom here gives us a coloring guide. The inner pages are for assembly instructions. And then the black and white side is all for assembly instructions. Okay, so let's start a look at the new parts with this new shoulder joint which replaces the old one which was made of ABS plastic. This is quite a nice upgrade because it lets the shoulder swivel forward now. And what's more, because the entire runner is cloned, we end up with two sets of these joints, so you can donate the extra one to an old Zika kit if you like. Now by itself, this joint replaces the original ball joints on the shoulder with this newly designed upper arms that terminate in a peg, and we're going to look at these arms in a little bit more detail later. But the kit quite considerately gives us these two little balls on a peg, so you can use this new joint with old Zika arms, which I really appreciate. So here's the Char Zegok upgraded with the new joints. Now you'd expect the new joints to bring massive improvements, but honestly, the range of movement is basically the same. Seriously, you're not going to be able to tell much of a difference. Now, I like the kit having the fancy new joints on an irrational level, and I think you will too, knowing that your Zegok is improved on the inside, even though you'll never see any actual benefits on the outside. It's a welcome upgrade that costs you nothing and it has no drawbacks, so I don't see the harm of liking it. Next, let's look at these new upper arms. In my review of the original HGUC kit, the ball joint sockets on the arm segments cracked open from the stress of the ball. This new update conveniently gives us an entire new set of upper arms and therefore eliminating all of those ball joints from this kit. Coincidence? Maybe. You'll have to decide for yourself if this is why we get these upper new arms right here. But they do update the looks a good bit. The new arms have added geometry which makes them nicer to look at, and I think they come in grey because they low-key leave this compatible with the mass production Zegok as well, but the downside here is that it's not really the right color for either kit in the end. And these new arms also come with some other trade-offs. While the shoulder movement here is more or less on par with the original ball joint, the bottom two segments have been simplified into one single one. And not only that, this single fuse segment now rotates along a single plane versus the ball joint adjustment the old one had. 
Now, I don't think this is the end of the world, and the original arm was somewhat limited in the range of movements anyway, but it's hard to deny that this simplified build is nonetheless a small downgrade, so you're gonna have to judge for yourself if you like these new arms better or the old ones. But you know what? Fortunately, they're really easy to swap in and out, so you can be as capricious as you like and you don't have to commit to either one. So really, you can see these parts right here as a separate thing from the amazing Zgok. This here is an upgrade kit for the Zgok that you can freely use entirely separately from the new weapons that we're going to take a look at next. And I have to say, I really like these new joints, and I especially like how we get two sets here since I think many of you watching this may already have a Zgok and you'd like to tinker and improve it, even though it's technically not much of an improvement. Now let's look at a new weapon unit for the arms. And to install these, you pull off the claws of the forearms, and then you install the new weapons. At the front, you'll place the claws back on, and really that's all it takes to turn the plain Zgok into the amazing Zgok. And I know I'm not alone in thinking that these do look really nice. The arms retain the Zgox's iconic overall silhouette, but they're clearly a remix of the classic superstar from the One Year War. If you like the Zgox but found the classic look a little bit too classic, then this is something you're gonna love. Before we move on to look at the different arm attachments, the arm itself has an unused joint that turns the hole right here at the front into one with a 3.6mm diameter. The instruction simply crosses it out as an unused part, but I think I know what it's originally planned for, and I'll tell you that at the very end. On to the attachments. First, you get these heat rods that are supposed to remind us of the Agugai. You get two of these for each arm, and they simply attach into the grey thruster bells in the arms to give you this look. They do look like a proper nod to the Marine MS Brother, and perhaps nothing else really has such funky whip arms. The curve of the heat rods are something in between dynamic and stationary, and they're a little bit hard to get into a nice range of interesting poses though. And if you like, you can put all three of them into one arm if that's something you want. Next up is the Juagu mode, which replaces the heat rods with these big gun barrels. The barrels themselves look quite nice actually, and it makes the amazing Zgok look much more capable at long range versus relying only on the mega particle cannons on the arms. But at the same time, it doesn't really look like the Juagu if you think about it. The three cannons in a row on the original Juagu is an important part of that look. It's really ugly, and unfortunately that's what helps us recognize it. And here, it just looks a little too sensible and nice when it's arranged in a circle like this. But regardless, you can look at it as an artillery firing form or something, and I still think this adds value and character to the kit, so I approve. And next up, we have the Zogok mode, with air quotes, because we have these two blades right here, which are supposed to be the wide cutters that are mounted on the top of the Zogok. Now the problem is, A, these aren't on the top of the head, and B, they don't fire out at all, and they're actually connected on a hinge. Sure, they're meant to fire out, and we're supposed to pretend that they do, but, well, they don't, and they can't convince me that they do. And that's what they are right here, they're on a hinge. What they do look like are two extra iron nails up top, and you know what? That's actually fine. They fit nicely with the ones down below, and they make the arms look more interesting. So while it doesn't look anything like the Zogok, I'll still give this a pass, it adds character, I like it. Alright, now for the AUG mode, which I didn't even know was a thing until I looked at the instructions. Now what's an AUG anyway? This, this is the AUG. It's a mobile suit designed for digging and boring tunnels. Now the instructions claim that this has an AUG mode. How? Because the iron nails can rotate. No, 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 Bandai. You don't get to not make something and then just pretend that it's there. That This is not a drill, and it's still not a drill even if I can rotate it. Bad, Bandai, bad. But overall, I think there's more than enough reason to want these new arms. What it adds to the Zgok, it fits fairly well. And it does what these additions should by making the original kit much more exciting, imaginative, and it goes nuts with some of its themes. And that makes it all the more strange that Bandai had to embellish things a little bit and make up that strange AUG mode thing. I mean, the arms alone right here can more than pull their own weight. And I'm sure some of you are going to wonder about this, but does this work with the RG Zgok? And unfortunately, no it doesn't. The RG Zgok's arm terminates in a ball socket, so it won't work with the rod inside the weapon's arm. 
even if you cut the rod off and try to attach the arm permanently with glue, that's still not going to work because the R-Jesus arm has a wider diameter with the HG one, and it's sadly not going to fit into the well inside the new weapon arm. Now, do you still remember the joint piece that we saw earlier? Yeah, I think you might know where I'm going with this. You see, no pair of hands fit into this piece that I tried except for one thing, the RG Zgox's claws. So I think this was meant to work with the RG at some point but they never quite got it to fit. But as a strange consequence of this, you can make a 4 clawed amazing Zgox if you want using the RG's of Zgox's part with the 4 iron nails. I mean it's not quite the beauty that a full RG amazing Zgox would have been but eh, something. With all that said, here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict for the Bandai 1144 high grade Bill Fighter's amazing Zgox. Number 1. The upgrade falls short. The upgrade to the Zgox's shoulder joints sadly don't give us any practical benefits. The new upper arms do solve the ball socket breakage problems on the old arms and I think that's probably the most important improvement here. But overall this is a 1.5 version of the HG Zgox in principle, but in reality it's more like a 1.05 patch that fixes some bugs. Number 2. It has amazing arms. Really, this is one of the better additions they've made to an old kit, and lord knows Bandai can add a lot to a kit and end up with a confusing mess. Ha, <laughs> see what I did there? The new weapon arms expand on the Zgog, and it's just a lot of geeky fun for mobile suit fans. Number 3. It's a stone throw away from the RG Amazing Zgog. And this point here is for the builders here. The kit almost works with the RG kit and you can make a riser part to connect the weapon's arm or you can reduce the walls on the amazing Zgox's weapon arm, but it's not a huge project. So I think this is one very exciting potential waiting within this kit, so give it a thought. So that's a review of the HG Amazing Zgox. It's a tidy little improvement over the base HG Zgox that's gonna let you enjoy the original kit in some new and amazing ways. Thank you so much for watching. Come look us up on social media with updates and sneak peeks at upcoming videos and projects, links are in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos like the review of the base HG kit. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.